We're here in Waterford on OTB with thanks to AIB, proud sponsors of the Football, Hurling and Camogie All-Ireland Club Championship, hashtag the toughest. And today I'm going to be chatting with recently crowned All-Ireland Club Champion, it's Bally Gunners, Desi Hutchinson. Desi, we're here in Ballygunner Club, just recently crowned All-Ireland Champions. Tell us about Ballygunner and what's it like as a place. Yeah, it's a, look, it's an incredible place for all of us. As you see here in the club, it's, we kind of have the best of everything, but as a place of a whole, it's, it's a real community spot. Um, it's a brilliant place for us um, to play hurling in. It's given us a great opportunity and yeah, everyone in the club is absolutely fantastic. And for you growing up here in the Ballygunner Club, was there role models that you looked up to? Yeah, there was. There was loads for us looking in at as we um, grew up, the likes of Paul Flynn, Stephen Frampton, Billy O'Sullivan, Fergal Hartley. There's, there's been loads that have done really well with Ballygunner and moved on to play with Waterford. And we've been lucky to have that platform as we grew up to, to kind of follow in their footsteps. And were they always successful? Uh, they weren't. They were successful probably as individuals, but in terms of playing with Bally Gunner and they probably underachieved a little bit in terms of winning Munster titles and um, All-Ireland titles especially. That's something that they don't have, but I suppose they gave us the platform to try and be as successful as we can. And obviously we've done that the last number of years in Wadford and especially this year in Munster and the big one, the All-Ireland. And so obviously when you were growing up, you had so many different role models. What about you now? You're seen as this role model within the, the Ballygunner Club. What is that like, I suppose, having the kids look up to you? Oh, look, it's great. Look, you know you're doing it for a good reason and to have the kids coming up to you saying hello or delighted to see you, it's, it's, a, it's a privilege really, you know, because you're making their day and they're also making my day as well. So, no, it's fantastic. And I think it's really important for the kids to have the kind of role models within the club and obviously winning all Ireland adds to that even more. So. It's, it's, it's fantastic to have kids coming up to you and delighted to see you and kind of hope that they might be like you one day. So this is our gym where we come, uh, we do a few group sessions and that together. So as you can see, it's a really good place to come, good facility and yeah. we're, we're lucky to have it, I suppose. Yeah, it's amazing because I suppose a lot of club gyms wouldn't have as many weight racks. You know, you'd only really have the one, but Having so many, you can come as a, as a team now. Yeah, exactly, and it's been done up in the last few months as well. So, as you say, we're really lucky, and it gives us a platform to go and do that together, as, um, which is really important, the way the game's going, that as well. So. How important is it to be able to get that strength and conditioning and that side of the game in now? Yeah, it's really important. Look, every team is trying to, I suppose, improve on that. And as you say, we're lucky enough to have this here in our own club where we can come together and do it, but the way the game's going, it's a huge aspect of the game and every team is trying to get stronger and fitter along with their, with their hurling, so it's really important that you're doing it. It's nearly 50% of the game at the moment. And obviously for you, you trained as a professional athlete, you know, playing in the, the Premier League to come home here to Ballygunner, which is obviously an amateur club. Was there any big differences that you've seen when you got back in with the lads? Uh, yeah, look, there's, in terms of fitness, there's probably not a huge amount. Like with Ballygunner, yes, maybe, because there's different standards of players and things like that. But in, from an inter-county level, not so much. But I suppose it's just the biggest thing around recovery and trying to find the time for the other bits of the game that probably people don't see. Um, so getting your recovery and your rest in is probably a lot harder than being a professional because you have to go to work, you have to go to college, and then you have to come in in the evening and try and get it all done. So it's harder in that aspect, all right, but we're lucky enough here that we've such a good setup that there is a lot of facilities for us to come to. And what was it like for you? You were telling me just out on the pitch before we came in here to the gym that it was from the age of about 15 that you actually left to, to go play soccer over in England. Yeah, that's right. It was, look, it was a big sacrifice that I made. Um, one I'm proud of, one that was, was really good, done it for six years and loved every minute of it, but came home, put the hurley back in my hand and kind of, that was it. Um, why did you come home? Was it always the, the love of hurling and missing the club and I suppose missing playing with lads you grew up with, you're playing with your brothers? Yeah, look, it was always in the back of my mind a little bit. Did I think it was going to happen so early? Probably not. Um, and that's the truth of it, but I suppose it's always in the back of your mind. Your best friends are here, your family's here. You watch the lads winning county titles every year. It's, ha it's hard not to want to be there. Did you always have your hurley over in Brighton with you? Yeah, I did. I tried to introduce it to a few lads. Uh, some picked it up, some didn't, but 
no, look, it was always with me. And any time I came home in the summer or around Christmas time, I'd always be up here poking with the lads as well. I actually remember Brighton, I think they were tweeting the time you were, I think it was Waterford when you were in the, the All-Ireland final and they were tweeting saying best of luck and the likes, you know, to, to you and the team. You know, it's nice to see after spending such a long time over there with them. Yeah, absolutely. Look, in fairness to Brighton, they were a great club and great people involved in it. And even to this day, they'd still, still give you a text, see how you are. And, and you came back home then and you played with Waterford FC here. And then you gave it up completely to just concentrate on hurling? Yeah, that's right. I was back at Waterford for about four or five months and playing in the League of Ireland. And I suppose things just maybe got a little bit stale with soccer. It wasn't the same as being over in England and that obviously Waterford were great, but the standards of being at a Premier League club to come into the League of Ireland was, there was a huge difference in that. But um, look, I was back around my friends, back around the family and all my friends are, are belly gunner hurlers as well. So. I was up doing a bit of training and just got that feeling back in me that I wanted to come back and play. So that was 2019 and that was your first year back playing and you just went on to win the county title again but this time you were there and you did it alongside your brothers and you got man of the match that day too. Yeah. <laughs> I know, that, look, that was, inc it was incredible because you're away for so long watching the lads win county titles and you're wondering would I ever do that but that was brilliant, that first year was, was unbelievable. To, Play in a county final to win. Obviously, getting man of match was a little bit extra, but it was uh, it was brilliant. Just to, that feeling of you know, I've won a county championship with Belling Hunter was was incredible. It's incredible after so long to not have played competitively, you know, played hurling competitively to be able to step in there and to put in such a performance as well. Yeah, look, that's it. I suppose thankfully, hurling came kind of natural to me. I didn't have to work really, really hard at it. Um, when I was younger and that it was just something I seemed to be natural at but it did take a lot of training and that to break into the belly gunner team I spent nearly all that summer making sure it was something to feel getting extra bits done to I suppose get that faith in the management to to prove I'm good enough to, to play for belly gunner. And the dream was then as well to, to play for Waterford? Yeah absolutely look I remember years ago at home like the mother would be saying to you would you rather go play soccer or go play hurling and I used to always answer that I'd rather play hurling, like you know, which, wow. is, which is strange because then I obviously done the yeah. opposite. But um, no, look, to go and play for Waterford, it's it's a massive thing, and it's a pinnacle of any hurler is to, I suppose, win an All Ireland club with club uh, title with your club, but then to go and play with Waterford is is huge as well, and there's a lot of uh, responsibility towards it as well, and a lot of sacrifice. But it's one we we love so much. And was it always the dream to win an All Ireland title? With yeah, absolutely. It was, look, when you're kind of when you're winning county titles and that a lot, it's obviously not every club does it. But we've been lucky enough to win a lot of county titles here in Waterford, and you're you're looking for something bigger, I suppose. And that was the ultimate goal because we probably did didn't achieve as much as we should have in the last few years. And to be able to go and win another Munster title and then go on and win the big one, the All Ireland was was huge for us. And I think it'll only make us better going forward as well because we've been there now and hopefully, please God, we'll get back there again. So the Munster final against Kilmallock, that was a massive hurdle that you knew you needed to obviously get over, but a lot of people talked about it too, that you sometimes fall at that hurdle. Yeah, absolutely. Look, we, we targeted that game big time because we were, in fairness, we were after losing a couple of Munster Championships, especially in 2018 against Boris Lee, so people did have their question marks over us, but we knew that was going to be a massive game for us and Kilmallock a great team, but I think we put in our, our best performance of the year that day down in Cork. And so then you went on to the All-Ireland semi-final against Loch Neal of Derry, and even the name in itself, you know that you're going to be up against it. Yeah, exactly. Look, we knew exactly when the draw was made and Loch Neal came through Ulster that it was going to be a hell of a battle and to be fair it was. There was nothing in the game for a long part of it and thankfully we just stuck at it and we, we got the result we wanted it but it, we knew it was going to be kind of a, a real dogfight. It wasn't a pretty game of hurling but we knew that going into it so we learned a lot from that as well because kind of people did say as well they, they don't know if Bally Gunner have it when it kind of comes to that sort of game so that was huge for us as well and actually gave us massive confidence going into the All Ireland final. And what did you learn from the Schlock Neil game to bring into that All Ireland final? Yeah, we learned a lot from it. I suppose we learned that you need to you need to do everything possible. I suppose you know when you play a game like that, it's not all going to be about pretty hurling. It's going to be 
a real dogfight. You need to win the dirty ball. You need to you need to prepare for big hits. Kind of everything you can imagine that an All Ireland semi final would bring against an All Star team, like you know. So, but look, it was it was brilliant, and it really set us up going into the All Ireland final. It was extremely physical watching on it. At anyway, it looked like that from from say the press box. Yeah, it was. Look, it, the game had a bit of everything. You know, like there was big hits going in. There was off the ball stuff going on. Look, it, it was great to be a part of a game like that, you know, and Slock Neil and Fairness, they're a mass, massive club that have been so successful as well. They've ran Bally Hale close a number of times, so we, we didn't underestimate them one bit at all. We knew it was probably going to be our toughest game of the year. And so that really prepared you then going into this All-Ireland final. You knew you were one step away from the dream, from that All-Ireland title. Exactly, it did, and look, there was a great build-up around it, but we tried to, I suppose, stay as close-knitted as possible because there could be a lot of distractions thrown in there, but we uh, we dealt with it well, and look, there's always that kind of element of fear, I suppose, going into your first All-Ireland final against a team that have been there so many times, but we just stuck to what we were doing all year, and look, thankfully, it was enough. And so, Bally Hale, they're going for three in a row. Did that play in your mind at all going into the game? A little bit, look, it's going to be... Um, it's going to playing their mind a little bit because of the fact they've been there so much and they're so used to being there and we haven't been there at all so it did play a little bit but we knew if we'd done our hurling it was going to be enough to beat them. And once you get over Schlock Neil you knew that it was just one last hurdle Desi before you got that All-Ireland title. What was it like say the morning of that All-Ireland? What was it like for you? What were the nerves like? Uh, to be honest the nerves were actually all right. Um, I don't get nervous too much, thankfully, but it was just pure excitement, I suppose, of heading up to Crow Park with your best friends, your family, everyone really looking forward to the game, but obviously there was huge concentration there as well, um, preparing for the game, so, but it was just more excitement than anything. Obviously, that few minutes before the game, a little bit of nerves kick in, but apart from that, it was just all excitement. And when the ball was thrown in, what was the intensity like? Did it settle down quite quickly, or how did you feel in that first, say, 10 minutes or so? Yeah, it was. It was hectic and it was kind of score for score early on and we started the game really well and then it kind of got a little bit stop start. So it was a strange first half. It wasn't as free-flowing as you might think a, an all Ireland final would be. So 10-7 at half time, you go into that changing room, know that you're not too far behind, as you said. But what was said by your managers at that point? Yeah, I suppose. I think the players kind of took over more than anything. We knew ourselves what we needed to do and we weren't showing our best capabilities, I suppose, of, of what we can do and people just, the real leaders in the group stood up and said like we might never be here again, that let's just go for it, have no regrets and that was the most important thing and thankfully we didn't have any regrets. You nearly didn't win it, it was late in injury time, it was the last puck of the ball, a substitute Harry Ruddle came off the bench and just, just magic really. What were you feeling like, I suppose, in that last minute or so? Did you think it was gone? Your chance was, was, was done? Yeah, I did, to be honest, a little bit. It was, it was crazy 30 seconds because I actually remember looking up at the scoreboard thinking, oh no, not again. We're going to be beating the Northern final. It was after being beaten in with Waterford not so long ago with Munster final with Waterford. So you're looking up at the scoreboard and you're kind of thinking, not again. But as you said, Harry came off the bench and just a pure moment of brilliance. And that's what Harry has in the locker and thankfully he brought it on the biggest day. Was that always the plan, to, to go straight for goal? Yeah, well look, he had no other option I suppose. It was, if he had have tried to pass the ball, the game was over. If he had to put the ball over the bar, we were bet. So there was literally no other option and it was some finish in fairness. But we all knew that Harry was kind of capable of that and we spoke about it during the week as well, that it might take somebody to come off the bench and win us the game and that's exactly what happened. It's the most amazing way to win and it's the cruelest way to lose for, for Ballyhale. Yeah, it is. Look, and there is a part of you that would feel some way sorry for them because we've been on the end of results like that as well, last minute goals. And it's an awful way to lose, but as you said, it's the best way to win. And that's all that was going through our heads at the time was how unbelievable that feeling was because the, the emotional change from 30 seconds left in the game to when the final whistle went was just, it was incredible and words just can't describe it. And do you remember who you ran to first or for what it was like on the pitch? <laughs> yeah, I did. I ran straight to Harry. He was, he was over my side of the pitch and I just seen him and I just couldn't believe it. And you kind of embrace him and then you just fall to the ground as if like, are we after doing this? And then you have everyone, the subs running in and 
your family running onto the pitch and it was just, it was the best two minutes of my life, that. And it's probably weeks later that it really sinks in and you sort of look back and say to yourself, whoa, this dream that you wanted to achieve for so long is actually a reality. Yeah, that's it, like, and it was funny, like, the few days after the match and in a couple of weeks, like, there was just lads texting into the group chat, lads, Harry Ruddle hit a ball in the last <laughs> minute of the game, we won in Ireland, like, you know, it was funny, you're kind of waking up to that kind of every morning for the, for the last couple of weeks, or for the couple of weeks after the game, and it just gives you that mood lift that you need, and it was unbelievable, but exactly as you said, it kind of only really kicked in when things settled down and you reflect on it as yourself and you reflect on the day. It was unbelievable and it's just something that none of us will ever forget. Ballygunner was the first club in Waterford to ever win the Club All-Ireland. That's pretty amazing and it's such a widespread club as well. Obviously we're here in Dunmore so it must have meant a lot to a lot of people. Yeah, it did, and as you said, to be the first Waterford club to do it, it was absolutely amazing. Like, I suppose you, that's another little thing you chase after, to be the first team to do it, never mind being the first in Ballygunner, but the first in Waterford is absolutely massive as well, so it's absolutely brilliant. And it affected so many people. Did you realise how it, what it meant to so many people? Yeah, that's it. Like, you only realise what it actually means to people until after you do it. So it, it was absolutely unbelievable. And, as I mentioned before, there was a lot of people that might have passed away or have been sick and it just gave them that, that buzz. And so playing with Waterford then, obviously you're over at Brighton, playing in the Premier League, but was it always at the back of your mind that you wanted to, to come home and play senior hurling for Waterford? Ah, yeah, it did because, because you grow up kind of hurling mad and you're looking at teams that have been there before and things like that. It was always in the back of your mind. As a young kid, I was always one to want to play hurling for Waterford and GA was always the biggest thing really. So to be able to do it now is, is absolutely brilliant and hopefully we can go on and be successful with them too. Yeah, and so for Ballygunner then, are you going to go on and do the two in a row? <laughs> We're trying to leave this one settled first, but no, look, that'll be the aim going into this year, you know, like we know we'll have a tough championship to come through in Waterford first, but I'm moving on to Munster, but Please God, that's the aim. As long as we're playing, we want to be as successful as possible and that'll be the driving force now to, to go and do it again. Whoa, it's absolutely incredible up here. Would you get into the water at all? Yeah, we do. Um, some lads do, some might not, but uh, <laughs> I won't name them. But um, no, yeah, look, we would have done a lot of recovery in that out here in Dunmore. Even so, during the winter? Yeah, during the winter, I suppose, even when it was probably more important, we, we were. It was, it's, it's lovely to have it here on our doorstep, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, really good and it's really important as well for recovery. So, yeah, we would have been down there on dark evenings and, and stuff down by the beach. So, no, it's definitely worth it though. And if I had to ask you to sum up the year, becoming an All-Ireland champion, how would you sum it up? Um, just unbelievable, the enjoyment we brought to it, like, you know, sometimes people don't like the real graft of stuff, but every time we went to the pitch train and during the year, it was so enjoyable and it let that led all the way through to the All Ireland final. And thankfully, it all paid off for us. You know, it was it was just a brilliant year and so much enjoyment went into it. And that's really it. We were enjoying ourselves, and that's why we were playing so well. Desi Hutchinson, AIB Club All Ireland winner. Thanks so much for joining me. Thanks, William. Cheers. <laughs>